Welcome to the Stacked Supplement Podcast, the premier source for supplement news and reviews. We are back with another Stack Supplement Podcast interview, and today we have, uh, I guess, one of the, uh, an extremely celebrated guest on. Um, it's very rare that we have bodybuilders on, and uh, it is uh, none other than uh, Brian Warren. Thank you for coming on. Thanks, Shane. How are you doing today? Good, thank you. I actually have to say share share a bit of a secret the first olympia i ever watched because i only got into supplements like late 2000 somewhere the first olympia i ever actually saw on webcast was when you claimed second place if i remember correctly and ever since then i was kind of introduced to those bodybuilders with jay cutler was you um i and dennis and phil and everybody yeah it was uh it was a it was a really cool kind of time and i just remember watching it because it was just i I had only heard that dexter jackson won and i had only just kind of started kind of getting into it so for me i was just like why didn't dexter get first again it was uh, (laughs) and then like it just then you 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 hear about everything you learn everything i said it was just one of the first times i had ever kind of seen the on on i guess on live or on screen um and it was really cool. It was awesome. So have you ever and, been to an uh, Olympian in person? I've been to, I've never I've been to one Olympia contest, mm-hmm. like in the it was in, I've been to eight Olympia expos, but I went to only one bodybuilding contest, and that was when uh Phil won that um the golden trophy. Mm-hmm. It was like the sixtieth or yeah. something like that, yeah. So. it was just a coincidence. My friends was there and he was like, dude you never been and i was like yeah i usually sit up in the hotel and stream it because i don't want to pay the money it's just so much and, I, I, what i tell people is videos and photos don't really do do the guys oh, justice oh, no. especially if you have a good seat up close and you can really see the guys you know up there close yeah and doing battle it's just it it's really uh you know they look superhuman so it's uh we were on the we were on the ground the floor level yeah. it was someone had a connection with a magazine and he and like when they walked off stage and came down it, it it's like like when you stand next to them and close you're just like oh they're just kind of normal sized dudes but then when you see them like i'm like how the fuck does the muscle separate like like how does this and they all came walking down and you just look at them and i'm like that doesn't make any sense like i know you, you see it in pictures but yeah. you just to see it in real life it's so it's much like, different in real life oh it's i don't know it, it is statuesque like they say yeah. but like even just it's just surreal that that's actually skin and i theoretically have the same body parts but they don't look any <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's just a lot it's all what you want in life and uh just uh you know at that level it's just a, it's a lifetime of hard work you know and discipline and dedication that goes into you know, yeah you were so you, you you were bodybuilding for, for for how long like i had i mean imagine it was a so incredibly long time. i competed for uh, eight years as an amateur and uh, I went from the time I did my first bodybuilding show until I turned pro. I was a uh, 26 when I turned pro when the Nationals uh, heavyweight and had my heavyweight class at the Nationals in 2001. And then I had a 15 year pro career. I, I did my last show in uh, March of uh, 2016. Oh, yeah. So you're going for well over to tw- into 20 years about. Yeah. So I, uh, when I first turned pro, I was like, you know what, if I could do this for five years, win a few shows make it to the Olympia, yeah. that would be a heck of a career, right? So, uh, you know, I thought, you know, my early 30s, it might be a wrap, but, uh, you know, I wasn't, even, I don't think I hit my peak until my mid to late 30s. So, uh, really, so I uh, never, uh, never envisioned I would have uh, have a career that lasted that long and much less do what I did. So, uh, but uh, at the time of my life, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Yeah, you, because like, like I said, I, I, I saw you at the, the Olympia where you got, runner up um and but you you're known for arguably the most intense hardcore training there is because i was also introduced to you because you were an athlete of muscle tech and you had like a lot of videos that kind of uh but even back then like i'm talking earlier <laughs> early youtube days but back then like they have videos of your training and it was extremely like everyone kind of knows body people know bodybuilding they know that you lift heavy ass fucking weights you you rip the shit out 
and it's it's pretty intense to watch. And I think Robert was telling me he saw you training, uh, Robert from Apollo, yes. and he was just like, "You guys, like, just still <laughs> destroying this shit, still ripping it up." <laughs> Is there like? I know a lot of people get their training style from 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 somewhere, or, or they have some idea behind it, methodology behind it. Was there any like? Did you just train like that from the beginning? Was there any kind of thing you attribute it to, or was it just like? Well, so I'll tell you the whole story. There's a story behind it, how it all came about. So uh, I was uh, I grew up in West Texas on a, on a ranch, and uh, when I was in high school, we moved to the Dallas Fort Worth area. And uh, anyway, I, I didn't have any money. I couldn't afford a gym membership, so I used to slip into this local gym. My friend and the neighborhood would open the back door. I'd slip in and work out. And uh, you know, you're 14 years old. You do what you got to do, right? So. Uh, I uh, started working out and met a bodybuilder there. That was huge, you know, 280, 290 pounds, national level bodybuilder. That's the first time I'd ever actually seen or met a bodybuilder. And just like you you were just talking about the Olympia, you know, this guy, he wasn't pro, but he was impressive. He was big. I never, I didn't know a guy could look like that. And, um, you know, it impressed me. Of course, he was strong and, you know, he had muscles that I didn't even know people had. And um, so he's kind of started helping me train, showed me how to train, how to eat right. And then, um, lo and behold, make a long story short, it was Ronnie Coleman's workout partner. Oh, and, shit. Uh, yeah, so uh, he took me over to my very first bodybuilding competition. Competition. I was 16 years old. I trained at a Metroflex, and I trained with him and Ronnie. And of course, the guy who owns Metroflex, Brian, you know, kind of oversaw everything. So that's it where makes that's sense. where it all came from. And <laughs> and this guy, Mark, um, to this day, is probably the hardest training person I've ever seen in my life. And uh, he out trained Ronnie and everybody mm. else. He was just a complete lack of a better word, man. He was a cycle in the gym, man. And uh, he, he could just the dude could get down and um so that's where i got it from and then beyond that brian uh you know he was very influential in my career also and the owner of metroflex that's who discovered ronnie and, and trained him and um so he was very influential so he trained me um in my early days and even in, in my pro days i had him uh, had him train us some and um so like those leg workouts we do you know he would come up with this crazy stuff like we would do a squats for three minutes well try and put put 225 on your back and try squatting for three minutes. And, uh, Maybe they're going to yeah, so, three um, minutes. you know, you, you, you would do leg extensions if you could time them, you know, yeah. like three or four. I think one time we get five minute leg extension set up for a second, down for two seconds, up for a second, down for two seconds. And it's all this crazy stuff. You know, we would squat, we'd go super heavy, you know, for a while. Then we do reps, you know, but, um, we had, he told us, we had 315 one day. He's like, you got 50 reps. How the fuck are you gonna do through 15 for 50 fucking reps? And I'm like, this is fucking nuts, right? But you don't complain because it gets worse if you complain. So uh, yeah. I, uh, you know, believe it or not, it took us about six weeks. We got 50 reps of 315, and uh, you know, if you're motivated, straight, straight, yeah, just not straight. 50 reps, just one yeah. after the other. I mean, you don't, but you got to be motivated. You got to be, be hungry to do stuff like that. And uh, I asked him one day, I said where you come up with all this crap, you know? And he goes, well, he goes, I'm from Detroit originally. And he goes, I used to walk by this gym every day and I'd stop and look in the windows at all these bodybuilders. And uh, this blonde headed guy came out one day and goes, kid, why don't you come inside? And uh, he came inside and he goes, the dude started helping me. And he goes, it was Tom Platts. Oh, so, shit. Yeah, so that's, uh, that was, oh, uh, wow. that's where the leg workouts and a lot of their stuff came from was, uh, was Tom Platts, you know, because everybody knows, I mean, I was just talking about him last week in Austin, had a picture of him on the wall with his legs. And I'm like, we see how much the physiques have evolved since the seventies and eighties to now, but even still who got the best legs of all time, Tom Platts. Yeah. I mean, there's 40 years later, he's still, I don't think anybody surpassed him. So, uh, uh that's um, a combination of, you know, Mark and Brian and Ronnie and Tom Platts had his influence in there too. And that's how it all kind of came about. <clears throat> kind of makes sense. Like, to be honest, when you said you were sneaking into the gym, I thought you were going to say that you just tried to, you know, get as much in in as short amount of time as possible. <laughs> I thought that's where you might have been going with it. But when you said Ronnie, I was like, okay, no, that makes sense because his was very similar, if not kind of the same. But Yeah, we, and I, in the early years, I trained exactly the same way. I think we did, uh, we trained six days a week. We trained our entire body in three days, Monday through Wednesday. Then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you went and trained there, did everything again. We took Sunday off and rested. So uh, I did, Jesus Christ, I did that for uh, Ronnie. Never changed. He kept that. I think his whole career. That's how he trained. Um, you know, I changed. I think when I was going to school in college, uh, I didn't have six days a week to get to the gym. So I, um, I cut it down to four or five days. I cut it down to four at one point, and 
it works, but I just didn't like being out of the gym for three days a week. So I bumped it up to five days and that's, <laughs> that's where it, uh, where it stayed. God damn. Oh, that, you know, that that, 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 does make a lot of sense. And like I said, there was something that you were known for. And I, to be honest, uh, when, I mean, I, I, I didn't, I hadn't met you before, but when Robert called me, um, he was like, I'm thinking about like signing, um, branch Warren. I was like, I was like, dude, fucking do it. Uh, and, and, and he says, you know, I, said, I, don't, I don't know him, but like, again, you were you are the hardcore dude that's what you're known for and i was like it's it's the best pairing you could ever get because he had asked about other athletes and i was like it just didn't really fit i mean you didn't really want just someone as a name to come on and i was just like branch fits it brings with him so many years of that reputation and it just kind of fits fucking perfectly and I was just like, you, you got to do it. Just, just make it happen. And it was, um, so you've been with them for, it's not sort of a year. It's like half a year, is it? It was, I want to say, last I think September will be a year. So we're not, not quite to a yeah, year. So yeah. Three quarters, thereabouts. So what was the kind of, uh, how did you come across Apollo? Cause I know Robert told me a bit, but like, how did you kind of, did you try this stuff before? Had you been familiar with the brand or? I had heard of the brand, uh, through, you know, some of the other guys, I think guy, my friend guy, Sister, you know, who told me about the brand. I had not tried yes, it. Yeah. And of course, I knew about Paula, uh, knew about Apollo Gym up in Jersey, and uh, which is uh, you know, where uh, Apollo Nutrition grew out of. And uh, so he, he reached out to me, and uh, we started talking. And uh, I uh, I really wasn't uh, looking for a, a sponsorship or anything. And uh, we get to talking, and uh, I said, well, man, I said, before I do anything, I want to try your products. And uh, so he sent me the products, and I tried them all out. <laughs> and um, they were, uh, you know, had some quality stuff, you know, uh, his pre-workout is badass. And, um, uh, I, uh, I'd kind of gotten away from taking pre-workout since I retired and all that, but, uh, I, I took his pre-workout and, uh, freaking it's, uh, it's my favorite, uh, favorite product they have, but, um, protein, the protein powder is the best tasting protein powder I've had probably since, uh, Gaspari, you know, back in the day. And, um, my fusion. Yes. So my fusion was my favorite for years, but, uh, Oh yeah, you're with Gaspari. That's right. I almost forgot about that. Yeah. So, uh, they, uh, I got to, you know, we talked back and forth and uh, just everything kind of, it was meant to be. And uh, I felt that what I represent and my style of training and my legacy, I think matches up to what uh, Apollo is. You know, it's a hardcore nutrition company. They stay focused on uh, hardcore bodybuilders and athletes. And they're not trying to appeal to, you know, housewives, and, you know, little yeah, yeah. people like that. Very, so, uh, definitely uh, not. you know, and I, I told him that, I said, you know, you guys, as long as you keep your focus and stay focused like that, I think it's a it's a perfect uh, be a perfect marriage, you know. If you start trying to <clears throat> get out into yeah. other areas, it'll never work. And that, that's not who I am. So it's been um <clears throat> been really awesome working with Robert and uh, Carolina over there. Have been uh, just been a lot of fun for the past. Uh, it's not even been a year yet, but it's been really good. Yeah, they, it's, they, come, it's been like nine months. Yeah, they were down here a couple months ago and had a great time. And so it's uh, got some got some cool stuff planned coming up in uh, the end of this year and next year. The uh, just a question because you obviously, like I said, you've been you were bodybuilding for years and years and years, so you would have. And I, I remember seeing the videos back in the day and and how intensely you trained. Did you have pre workouts like back then to get there to that level, or was that just like, nah, I'm um, gonna go in and do that anyway? You know, when I was young, young, so we had a guy in the gym. He's a chemist. So um, he actually made a <laughs> made stuff for us, man. So he made us a bag of caffeine and a bag of uh, ephedra, and I put little scoopers in there. And then what? So what we would do is he's like, "Hey, man," he goes, "The stuff is like pure ephedra and pure caffeine, so don't go crazy. Just use a scooper." And um, so I'd take a scoop of ephedra, a scoop of caffeine, put it in my coffee, stir it up, take an aspirin, drink it. And by the time oh, I get damn. to the gym, I would like be sweating, my eyes bloodshot. And you like, you, I feel like I could run through the brick wall and uh, it was incredible. Um, I got away from that as I, uh, I got older and, um, there was a period of time I didn't take pre-workouts. I didn't, I just didn't, um, I didn't need it anymore. I think you're, when you're motivated enough, you know, the height, yeah, yeah, the yeah, height yeah. of my career, you know, I was training for the Olympias <laughs> and winning Arnold's and all that. I was so motivated. I don't think a pre-workout would have added anything to me. Honestly, um, I was so, uh, I was gonna, that was kind of what I was curious about because i know you see these olympia trainers uh, olympia athletes even back in 
the eighties and nineties, how they train quite heavy, quite intense. And I was like, well, I know they don't have the pre-workouts today, but even with some of the best pre-workouts today, yeah, there have been days I don't think I come close to what they did and they had nothing. Yeah. So I always wonder like you, you, know, you gotta want it up. in here. You know, it's, yeah, that, that, yeah. you gotta have that that drive, drive motivation, and desire to you've got to have a goal in front of you and that you're you're focused on, you have that laser sharp focus. I've always I've always thought at that level, when you get to that level, like the upper HL or like the high guys, you probably I was just curious, you know, when it's what you live for, how much like an extra bit of this and extra bit of that's going to push you, at least in terms of pre-workout, in terms of training. And I was, um, yeah, I was curious because <laughs> I know that obviously I've stopped my career in terms to look big and lift heavy, but um, it's uh, it has always been a question I wanted to ask someone. So, yeah, you obviously were um, with the pollen now doing really well. I have to agree with the supplements are. Uh, I would say as hardcore as you're going to get, at least in terms of what you're going to find on shelves and um, over the counter and supplements that just, you know, fit into the big retailers and stores. Um, But you also have another brand in Wicked Cuts. And I, from what I remember, you started with, it was just beef jerky, correct? So we've got 14 flavors of jerky. We've got beef jerky, bacon jerky, turkey jerky, and, um, chicken jerky we just came out with so you have buffalo chicken and sweet savory chicken and we have four different flavors of bee sticks and we have five different seasonings we've got we're always about every quarter at least we come out with some new flavors and new products so we got some new stuff scheduled for uh, the upcoming third quarter here about to come out but uh we started it with um uh, three years ago in may just had our birthday so i'll partner up with uh, scott james scott james was the original owner and founder of bsn I, if I, I knew there was i was i was before we did this interview i i looked up and i was like how the fuck because it was him who put me on because I knew him from uh, Sinfit. Yeah, he had Sinfit. And so, yeah. And, uh, I, knew that, I knew he was connected to it some way. So. Yeah, so he uh, he started BSN and I grew it and I sold it uh, a few years back. And we were actually on a plane and uh, flying somewhere and we ended up sitting next to each other. And uh, he said, hey, he goes, when I get back to town, let's go to lunch. I want to always want to work with you and uh, we'll do something. So... We got together when we got back, and um, he said, hey, let's do a beef jerky company. And I'm like, beef jerky? Because it just took out ahead. I figured it's going to be something more in the fitness industry. But uh, we talked about it, and, um, you know, beef jerky, it appeals to everybody, right? Supplements, you've got, yeah. what, 3 4 5% of the population, maybe, that you're marketing towards, where jerky's everybody. And uh, for the most part, it goes, you can sell anywhere from a hardware store to a convenience store to a anywhere you guys any, any retail shop you can sell jerky at so um yeah uh, went to work on it and uh, got it launched three years ago and we're doing great we're probably over two thousand locations across the country so and you can find yeah, us, well, you can find us just, online at wickedcutsjerky.com yeah i remember when it came out i was sort of uh see the thing is i, I kind of like our industry and the people that are in it such as yourself, because I feel like um, even if someone who's not sports related, sorry, even if someone such as yourself does something that's not necessarily sports related, you get that 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 following you have just gravitates towards it. I imagine that all your followers that you built over the years would have been like, even if they didn't eat jerky, I feel like they would have just been like, you know what, I'm going to try some of his jerky purely because I like brunch and I, I just, I like seeing, I imagine that's probably the case, especially since, um, you know, Scott James obviously had a lot of the connections. You know, that's, uh, I'm very blessed to have some of the best, uh, best followers that you can imagine. <clears throat> These guys and girls are super loyal, uh, you know, and uh, we've had, enjoyed a lot of success, I think, early on because of, uh, you know, I got some great fans. I mean, you know, it's like, uh, I know some of the people I looked up to early on in my career when they launched their companies, you know, like Lita Brada or something, when tried the products because, you know, it's like dude Lee's awesome so i'm sure he's not gonna have a have a crap product so um, things like it's the same kind of thing and um so i was very blessed to be enjoyed a lot of a uh, lot of success very quickly with the company and uh you know i'm sure a lot of that was due to due to my following and you know scott his connections and we were able to get them get our products out there and get the get the word out there about the products and uh it's been good yeah it was um 
you, you have expanded beyond jerky. I thought you did you done seasoning at some point. Or? Yeah, we have five seasonings. We just came out with a new seasoning, uh, Parmesan. So uh, seasoning. So uh, we've got seasonings, uh, beef sticks. Our beef sticks we developed for the fitness market. Uh, each beef stick has 15 to 16 grams of protein in it. Uh, no, they're gluten free, no added nitrates, and uh, super healthy stuff. So they're uh, you could eat two beef sticks, which is really easy to eat, and you get you know yeah. 30, 32 grams of protein. And uh, you know I've always taken protein shakes. And, uh, you know, at least one a day, sometimes two or three, depending on what you know stage of my training I was in. But, you know, protein shakes, they're uh, not a replacement, they're a supplement. You know, where a beef stick, that's actual food. You know, it's like eating a steak. So it's a nice, it's a nice change of pace. Yeah. So I actually, I, I, I don't know if you've seen it. There's a brand that does a beef bar, it's a protein bar. Yes. And it, yep, no, I, I know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, I when it came out and I was like, this is the strangest thing I'd ever fucking thought yeah, of or seen in my life. called Bill Tongue or something, right? No, no, no. no. Uh, so Icon Meals uh, is they're like a meal prep company. Mm-hmm. It's if you can if you have, have you tried the Outright Bar or at least seen yes, it. Uh-huh. If you can imagine that same thickness and shape, but it's just beef. Really? And I it, when it came out, they said it's like a beef bar, and I was like, bullshit. Like I because they didn't show usually they show you unwrapped and i was like this would be really cool and so i just bought it on a whim i was like whatever it gets here it's in like a clear looks kind of gross like if you can imagine like kind of i don't know like it gets a bit moist and stuff yeah but it's just like a almost like a brick of beef and then you peel it open and the smell hits you and you eat it and it's it's a little drier actually it's probably about as dry as you'd think um but it's it's, it's kind of the same thing. It's like the beef stick, but because it's so much bigger, it's not as easy to enjoy as a beef stick. But <laughs> I just, because the beef stick's like the perfect diameter where like you don't, you're not chewing for too long. Yes. You can't bite off a whole amount because it's not that thick. Um, this was thick and it's a bit dry, but the macros are intense, really good. Uh, and, but it was just the weirdest concept I had seen or thought I'd, you know, in terms of protein bars just a bar made of beef uh and i was like you know what this would be a nice fit for wicked but i just you, 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 yeah i don't know if it would pass the test of the mainstream <laughs> like i was eating it i like ate it because i thought of the macros i was like no car like low carb good protein yeah, it's, it's a healthy snack you can't hardly uh yeah you couldn't beat it you can't it's way better than a protein bar or a snickers bar or something like yeah. that we can't beat it like but you it, said, it, so. it, it it walks the line of you know i'm eating this for the macros not how it tastes like because you, you wouldn't want to eat this <laughs> <laughs> well that's that's always the key i think the key with food is that you got to make it taste good you know to, to that's the, that's why i liked the the beef stick yes. i thought it was just a great blend like i said it's not thick it's just easy to eat on the ground again the macros a solid um were there any other like kind of products that you thought wicked could go into because I know beef is not like it's a little it's 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 a limited market but it's not if you get what i mean like uh because you you've roped yourself into that kind of um i guess category of beef snacks it's a kind of yeah but snacks. we actually you know we've got a bacon jerky which actual strips of bacon we make into jerky which is uh like we got a breakfast bacon flavor we've got a maple bacon which is my favorite it's our number two seller um sriracha bacon then we, of course, we have buffalo chicken, which is chicken jerky and sweet savory chicken. And then we also have a Korean barbecue and teriyaki turkey. So we've got a lot of uh, different types of meat, you know, that, yeah, we, yeah, that yeah. we use. So, uh, um, and of course, we have the beef sticks, the seasonings. And then, uh, of course, we've got some other products that are coming out that are not going to be jerky. And uh, I don't want to let the cat out of the bag. Not a ruin yeah. the surprise. Yeah. But we're working on a couple, <laughs> couple different products right now that are they're not jerky, but they're still uh, kind of fit in that snack uh, snack category and uh that are coming out so we're uh, definitely always taking us out the box and trying to be a little uh, a little creative and innovative and like the key is making things still taste good oh yeah it's, just, it's the key and it's the problem at the same time it's, and uh, i kind of like i like those brands that have the you know the niche where they're again not limited to meat snacks but you do have to make it seem familiar where fans who like your snacks are going to be like okay this makes sense it's not forced it's yeah. not strange and i did like how you went to the different meats instead of the typical kind of beef jerky um 
And yeah, I think it would be cool to see some some expansion. But obviously, the brand, even though it's like been around three years, that's still relatively young. I would say well, we're still very young. Yeah. I mean, three years is not old for yeah. a company by any means. And, uh, it's not. No. So we're, uh, you know, we're uh, always looking for new products. Like I said, every quarter we're coming off new products, and we got some in the pipeline right now that are not jerky. So uh, it's going to be some new, uh, new little the same area but a different area. Same, same but different. You know what I mean? Still being a snack mm-hmm. food thing, but it's going to be healthy snack food. And um, I think it'll it'll appeal huh. to uh, a lot of people. I'm listening for clues, but I can't seem to find any. All I'm getting is <laughs> is uh, is uh, products that's that's not meat. Uh, I'm just no, I'm, I'll, I'll I'll leave it. I'll wait for a few more clues and details. But um, yeah, you were saying uh, we'll go back to Apollo for for a bit. Um, so you were saying you, I mean, I'm not sure if a uh, Robert can know, uh, want to mention it. But obviously, you guys have been working together, and you're working on some stuff for later this year. Um, is there anything you would want to see, I guess, added to the line? Because I remember talking about this with Robert, and I said, I know, again, I don't know Branch, but I know bodybuilders have things that they, like how you said you got bags of caffeine and ephedra. I'm not saying, uh, you know, do that, but bodybuilders tend to have things that they do in their lives or the careers that you don't necessarily find on shelves and they don't necessarily share with anyone or they don't think it's worth sharing with anyone. Was there anything you did um, throughout your career that you were like, you know, it's not overly important. Maybe now you're just like, you know what? That was never on the shelf. Or was there something you thought could be good and you could get behind because it was something you did religiously? Um, I don't, I don't a think, secret of, of sorts. You know, I, I always tell people, I wish it was a secret or some magic formula I could, yeah, yeah, I can yeah. tell you about, but uh, nah, I just kept it pretty basic, man. You know, I took uh, protein shakes were a staple part of my program year round. Uh, you know, how many I took depending on what phase of training I was in uh, pre workouts. Uh, I did all through my 20s uh, religiously. And then uh, since I retired, I, uh, I started taking pre workouts again because, uh, like I said, when I was in the peak of my career. I, I kind of got away from them because I was so motivated yeah. anyway. It didn't, didn't really matter. Um, but uh, now definitely. It, uh, they definitely help get me going in the mornings when I go to the gym. Um, you know, PCAAs, you know, I think are very important. Now, recovery, the biggest part of bodybuilding is recovery. You know, I think that's oh, yeah. where most people, they fall short. You go to the gym, we all love to work out, right? You wouldn't be a bodybuilder if you didn't like working out. But where people fall short is the nutrition side. And recovery is so important because you go to the gym and you bust your butt and tear yourself down. If you don't have proper nutrition, proper supplementation, rest, you don't recover like you should. You never realize your full potential and get the gains you, sh- you should get. Um, so, you know, BCAs, uh, uh, protein shakes, things like this, I think are very uh, always part of my, my program. But I wish I had some kind of secret, uh, secret no, stack no. or formula I could, <laughs> I could tell. But, man, I was uh, I stuck to the basics, man. And, um, I, it worked. I know. It's just you hear stories that I, I like. Uh, there was a bodybuilder who he had this ideal blend of carbs aminos and protein in intra workout but put it into a product and he really believed in it because it was something he did through the years that he was competing and it wasn't obviously i guess common it was a very unique type of product but i always like seeing those things where people you know like it's not necessarily a secret or like it's just a quirk maybe something that they did like you know ronnie's famous uh fucking little box of pills where you would pick one out of each one and it was this was vitamin this and this was that like you know you got a story there where you could have bought all that together in a pack and it would have been dynamite he probably didn't know what was remember the doses of everything but that kind of thing i've always liked seeing and uh to be honest though i think your your secret wasn't necessarily a secret it was just the intense training <laughs> i think it was, it's more of an obvious thing yeah you just went after it and then uh you know just sticking with nutrition um I think I, I was more of a nutritionist than I was a trainer because it's a nutritionist. That's 80, 90% of the game. Um, you know, I saw yeah. guys that, that we had a guy that trained with us for a long time and um, he had never got beyond the amateur level and he did the same workouts we did. But the difference was our nutrition. And when I say our, I said me and Johnny, that was, you know, we were on point. Off season, we were on point. Pre contest, we were on point. This guy, yeah, he'd get it for contest and he'd be good for those, you know, 12 weeks. But then after that, it was, you know, it sucked. Three, 365. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's, it's, uh, it's a lifestyle. You live it. 
year round. You know, all season is just as important as pre contest. You gotta have a plan. You gotta stick to it. Because if you don't, you don't grow and you don't make improvements. And uh, I think that was the difference, you know. So the dude was motivated, big. You know, he trained hard, but he didn't make the improvements he needed to make to go pro because all season he, he did not have the same dedication. I feel like that's what we need. I need to hit up Robert and I need to say you need to create something called branches 365 i don't know what it'll be but you need to do something because it is like i said it, 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 even if it's not a, a supplement it's a message it's a style of training it's it's something and uh, like i said you're you're an ideal fit if not the perfect fit for apollo and you kind of if you told me do a promotional video of an athlete in the gym i would think that that would be you training well you know that's one of the things uh, robert said you know when we were talking he said you know most of the guys uh, a lot of the guys when they retire you know give them a couple of years they don't look like, like they ever touched a weight again you know and uh he goes you know you still look like a bodybuilder and uh, this is what so, I heard. Uh, yeah. yeah so um <laughs> i was like well thanks i try um not as not as big as i once was but uh you know but i still try to ch- still train and um i can sum it up you know people ask me why do you train so hard still well i can sum it up like this some people train because they were bodybuilders i was a bodybuilder because i like to train yeah it's a difference yeah. Yeah. so again i can uh i was uh up until like, like 24 i was a competitor swimmer and i swam from 10 to, t- to 24 25 years old and a lot of the people that kind of dropped off around 16 17 they did nothing uh-huh. and like when i stopped i just went to the gym i was like i don't want to do nothing I don't. Yeah. I'm. I enjoyed the performance aspect of of, com, of competition, and I enjoyed seeing improvements along the way. It was like an addiction almost. I didn't necessarily do it because I'm like my doctor told me to. I didn't do it because you know I liked. That's what kept me doing. Yeah. I was like I wouldn't know what to do for two hours of my life each day if I didn't get to go to the gym. Again, I might not be like huge or strong, but it's that thing that. I don't know. And, but then some people, I can talk to people sometimes and they'll be completely fine with never going to the gym, eating whatever. And I just look at them like, how do you live? How does that make sense? I can't. Oh no, I can't do it. It's a, I can't do it. No, I think that bug, uh, once it's in your blood, I don't think you ever get it out of your blood. No, I, was... I, don't, I don't think it necessarily mean matters if it's the gym. It's just something exercise physical wise. I feel in love gym with just it. Does I was it. 16 and I fell in love with it. And, uh, you know, training just just was I love it and uh, I remember told myself as a kid I was like I'm never I'm never not gonna train and uh, it just uh, it's part of my life and you know I just you just get up and do it and um, if you're having a horrible day you don't feel, you don't feel good you go to yeah, the gym yeah. and train you always feel better so I learned that I like the uh, I also like the measurement of it like how you can literally go in one week after another and you can you can row 150 pounds and that you go in the next week. You, you have a level that you know last week you did 10 reps on it if you don't do 10 reps this week you're either worse or at the very least the same and it, i love the measurement of it because not all sports have that and you can measure it on every exercise on every day on everything and it's just even if it's 50 reps i would never go there but if, even if it was like you have this standard where each week you know someone you don't need anyone to tell you They're like you're shit because you would lifted three reps too light or whatever I like that reassurance. You know, that's a, you're absolutely correct. Uh, 100 pounds is always 100 pounds. The weight's always yeah. shifting straight. And um, like you said, it's always the same. There's no bullshit. And, uh, you know, you did 10 reps this week, but what are you going to do this week? You know, you did 10 reps yeah. last week, you know, so, and you can always, uh, that's, you can always measure yourself and uh, it's always legit. It bugs the shit out of me when I'm short from last week. And, you know, you can look around, you can say, uh, Maybe I didn't sleep enough or whatever, but it's still your fault. It's up to you to, that's why I kind of, it, it is an addictive thing. Cause when I got into it, I was still swimming, but it, it, that addiction kind of grew just to be able to go. When you start, yep. did lifted three plates. Oh, now I can deal with three and a half. It was magic. Not so much now, but you know, it just goes up and up and up. And it's just a standard to say that you are stronger flat out. I think it's a, uh, yeah. It is an addiction. It is, it is a fun thing and it is an easy habit to get into. Yes, very much so. But I know that uh, I said to Robert, I said, you should probably put a win train to 
I said it and then I retracted it. I said, you should do a train with branch competition on the tub. And then I was like, you know what? Maybe not. Because <laughs> I kind of said that uh, it might be something that people would like to see rather than be a part of. So I got a story on that one. So uh, years ago, what, uh, when I was with Gaspari, this was probably, I don't know, 2014, 2015, somewhere in there, that time frame. Um, we had a train with a, with a branch competition. And um, it was uh, in England, okay? And I, th I think we were in London. I'm not sure. It might have been Birmingham. But uh, So anyway, a lot of people wanted this thing. And, uh, they chose a winner. He was a bodybuilder. He was like a lot heavyweight. And um, good-looking guy. Build. And um, so he's going to train with me and Rich. And of course, you know, this guy is all excited and pumped up. You know, I think I just uh, won the Arnold Classic or whatever show it was. And I just came over and <clears throat> I saw – I really wasn't um, – after I, I got done competing, I usually took a couple weeks off and didn't train. And Rich was like, man, we got to do this leg workout or something. I'm like, man, let's don't do legs. Let's do something else. And I, I think I just want to show actually on Saturday. This is like Tuesday or something after the, the show. And I'm like, I'm not wanting to train legs, especially because I'm on, I, I intended on taking the week off and just, you know, touring and, you know, visiting, doing the things we're doing, seminars and all this. Well, um, we start training, of course, start filming it. And this poor guy, he was a nice guy too. He just got caught in the middle. So Rich starts like, it's like poking the bear, right? He just keeps on on. Now Rich can train. You know, Rich was probably 50 at the time or something, close to it. But the dude can still get down. I mean, he can still, you know, legs and back and things. He can still train. And uh, so he just started just poking me, poking me, right? And uh, and I'm like, I'm, I'm getting mad. And uh, fine, we're, we're squatting. And so finally, I just get pissed. I'm like, all right, all you motherfuckers are going to die now. And uh, <laughs> so I get pissed and I go off and I just start fucking training. And uh, so <laughs> this poor dude, man, is just training with us. He's just all excited, you know, happy. I get to train with Rich Spire and Branch, man. It's awesome. Blah, 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 blah. But he just gets caught up in the middle <laughs> of our war. And, uh, of course, you know, there's no... You know, you ain't gonna, you don't get to like do half what we're doing. You know, you're gonna have to, you gotta step up and do it, right? So the dude, he steps up and starts trying to do it. Well, I don't know, about three exercises into this deal, he, uh, he sees, his body seizes up, his legs, they cramp up, he falls off the machine. He's oh, like, shit. he's like, oh, or something. And Rich is like, get the fuck out of the way. <laughs> he steps over this poor dude and uh, he's all seized up and locked up and uh, he can't train. And <laughs> So, so it's just me and Rich are still going at it. Well, Rich gets sick. He throws up all over the place, right? And uh, I'm like, oh, hell. And of course, you know, you ain't done either, fucker. <laughs> and so uh, <laughs> and I think this other poor guy threw up too, man. He's still cramping up on the floor. He can't even work out no more, man. He just, he's a poor, this mush in the floor. And uh, Rich is like throwing up all over the place, man. And it just, and I'm just still going off on Rich. And I'm like, do your fucking set. <laughs> and, uh, so it just turned into a, a complete disaster for this poor guy. <laughs> it's probably it's probably not what the uh, promotional poster made it. Up <laughs> yeah, it be. wasn't. A, <laughs> it wasn't. I think this guy when it was all said done, he's thinking I didn't win nothing. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, I feel like it's an ex it'll be an experience. It's an experience for it. sure. But uh, yeah, it was. Uh, he just Rich just kept on on trying to get me uh, hyped up, and Jesus, he got me so. Well, right after the competition, so it <clears throat> would look good for sure. Oh, yeah, I was in shape for sure, but uh, <laughs> you know, I usually after a show, man, I would uh, kind of take it easy and chill. And uh, you know, plus I was, uh, I think I was still, you know, I was jet lagged, still hadn't got used to the. I just got there on like a Sunday night or Monday, and uh, oh, so you just flying in, yeah? yeah can... So I was like, I was not feeling it, but uh, he just kept on and on. So I was like, all right, then I got pissed, and I was like, you know, that... I vaguely remember the train with branch competition promotion i don't remember how it was given away or where but i do know that in the uk they have some some fucking killer like i've seen some hardcore gyms in the u.s but in the uk i've seen some shit i see some, i've seen some rugged ass places now they got some badass gyms over there man i was just over there a couple years ago with king's gym and trained or whatever just a badass gym i've been to several other other facilities there that are they've got some badass uh badass places it was there was one in London I went to and it had, and it was just because it was close. I can't remember the name of it. And I was staying with my uh, cousin and we walked over to it and we didn't really know what we were getting into, but it was like concrete floor. The, uh, the, the racks were rusted and bent. The, uh, the, 
the bars on some of the rowing machines that would usually be up and diagonal had folded. <laughs> um, they had the dumbbells went all the way up to 250, which is not something you see often. No one touched them though. Um, none of the plates matched. And the one thing I thought was kind of the quirkiest was that uh, like they had a sign on the wall. It was $5 casual entry, but it was $3 for women. Uh, and it's just because we know, we, we know you're going to be using cardio equipment. <laughs> And at this time, it was obviously this day and age is probably not okay to say, but when I saw it, I was just like, it's kind of the probably put up in the 80s or 90s and just never changed, never changed it. it yeah. And I, it was just one of the, the coolest gyms I've been to. And some of those UK ones, and I Dorian's one, I, uh, I never got to go to, but I heard that was uh, a unique place to, to train at. It is. Um, um, it reminded me of Metroflex. Uh, it was actually a little bit cleaner than Metroflex. And, uh, you know, I think the only difference is, you know, Dorian's place is dark and kind of like dank and damp, you know, under in a basement. Metroflex is yeah. just hot and dry and dusty. And, uh, but the same, same thing. And, uh, I remember I went there the first time I trained there and they're like, what do you think? And I'm like, oh, it feels like home. <laughs> it's no. Would you prefer, do you, do you prefer when the gym is sort of dark and dead or like that dry hot? Cause I like the dry hot. Two very different. Yeah. I, I like to say, I like the dry hot cause that's what I've trained in my entire life. Um, you know, I'm, I prefer to not have air conditioning. Um, you know, the, <laughs> it's, uh, well, once you get used to it, you get warmed up so quick. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's just better to work out in. Now, if you're not used to the heat, it'll kick your butt. But if, you know, you start training in yeah. early in the year and, and, and go there every day as it, as the climate changes, then, uh, you know, you'll, uh, you'll get used to it. And uh, I prefer that actually. I don't like the air con and the fans. I specifically turn them off when they're near me, but I cannot stand that dry heat. I almost have just trouble fucking breathing. And it's <laughs> it like, but again, I think it's like you got to get used to it. Get used to it. But I've I've been to it times because I'm used to cold winter, kind of damp, just trying to get myself warm in the first place, let alone warmed up. And when you go to those places, I just find that the heat almost takes your breath away. I've trained at some places before, and it's oh, it does it takes a while. To get to. But if you get, I think if you get used to it, then it's uh, not that big a deal. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, <clears throat> thanks for coming on. It was it was great having a chat with you and uh, talking about wicked cards of Poland. Um, and yeah, it uh, sounds like there's a lot more still to come from a Poland and wicked cut. Neither of which we're saying, but well, yeah, Robert. <laughs> uh, yeah, Robert with the Poland. Uh, got working on something really cool to come out with from. With a pollen, uh, we're gonna do uh, some very cool stuff we got lined up uh, coming up, and then also uh, later in the year, I don't have the date in front of me, but we're doing a seminar at a pollen gym. So, it's gonna oh, be- yes, yes, so, uh, yeah, October, no, yes, October, October. yeah, I thought it was it's October. in October, I just don't have the date in front of me. I think it's at the end, yes, I think it's 20 something, 23rd, yeah. maybe, or something like that, but uh, yeah, so uh, <laughs> I'll be there, guys, this will be there. I forget who else has already signed up for it. Uh, it's going to be there, but I think Dennis Wolf will be there also. And uh, so it's going to be a cool seminar. So anybody that's in the northern New Jersey, New York City area, mark it on the calendars and stop by. It's a free seminar. So uh, stop by. All wants to drive. Yes. So, well uh, worth driving. A few people are. I was meant to go, but I'm, I'm not going to be able to make it. But uh, I heard that it's, it's, yeah, it's a star set of lineup. So we got a, got a good lineup and I will, I'll be up there. In October, the Apollo Gym in Jersey. So, uh, if you're in that area, come by. If you're not, if you don't travel, come on, check it out. It's worth the time. And uh, we got some good stuff coming out from Apollo Nutrition. We're doing a collaboration on some products. So, uh, that's going to be very cool. And uh, stay tuned. We'll be announcing that here in the coming weeks. Oh, oh so let's go. Kind of, I know that Robert talked about it, but I, I don't, I know with the supply and shit, everyone's kind of everything's gotten pushed back uh, because the supply is just about every industry supplies a problem uh you know from yeah. automobiles to supplements to you name it supply is a problem i think it's a we're starting to feel the effects of the uh, long-term effects of covid the pandemic yeah. and all the shutdowns and everything so we're still uh i think the manufacturers no matter what they are we're still trying to get caught up and if everything comes back to life so hopefully hopefully the next few months everything so hopefully we can all return to normal hopefully 
yeah yeah by the seminar would be nice and so uh okay well well I'll, I'll i'll definitely make sure i try and get as much information from the collaboration as i can and of course the wicked cuts products uh, whenever you want to share those details or even any clues because i'm intrigued by something that would fit with wicked cuts that's not beef i'm it's got me thinking but uh if you want to shoot anything over just let me know we'll get it shared but uh once again thanks thanks for coming on thanks for having me on soon